him for all that God has done in our hearts and lives. Thank you so much uh, for being here this morning. Uh, if you are attending for the very first time this morning, thank you for being here. Uh, if you did not receive a gift, we have one for you at the Welcome Center right after service. So please uh, take time to go by there. And we just want to praise him, honor the Lord, and thank him uh, for all that God has done in our life. If you're blessed this morning, would you say amen? Amen. It is good uh, to come together and celebrate and honor the Lord. We want to do that by obedience and following Him every single day because guess what? He knows where we need to go, and God has the grace for every step we take, and we want to praise Him. I want to invite you to stand together at this time as we ask our ushers to come forward as we give this morning of our tithes and offers to the Lord, and we want to give God praise uh, through giving and honor His name that He is alive and well. Uh, and we can also give online uh, through our Poovey's Chapel app or uh, poovey'schapel.org. Uh, so thank God for those opportunities God gives us to be able to give, uh, to worship Him in giving. Uh, we support missions around the world. We support missionaries around the world. We also, uh, uh, in our giving, uh, support the ministry that God has given us right here as a church to honor Him and to lift Him up in our own community. Uh, and uh, we just want to praise God for those opportunities that God gives us every single day. In giving also, it helps us keep the lights on. Amen. Uh, so uh, we praise the Lord for all God has done and what God is doing uh, as, a, uh, as a church. So uh, we praise Him for taking care of us every day. I want to ask you to be in prayer uh, this morning for Earl Story, which is Larry Story's dad, uh, who has uh, been in the hospital since Tuesday. Uh, so please remember them in prayer. Uh, and I know they are trying to make some plans for him. So please pray uh, for him. And also remember Clarence Rhodes in prayer, uh, who is still at hospice. Uh, so please uh, remember him in prayer and all of our family uh, as we uh, are there with the family. So please remember uh, us in prayer. Uh, and then uh, also uh, please remember uh, 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 Sheila Perry's family, uh, I know Perry's not her last name anymore, uh, but her dad at Charles Perry was the pastor here back in the uh, uh, late 60s, early 70s, and she passed away uh, this week, so please remember that family in prayer also, that God would just surround, surround them, lift them up, and encourage them. I'm glad this morning there's a better place to go, amen? The Bible says to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord, and God gives us that opportunity to live in that hope every day of knowing and that if something happens to me down here, guess what? I know where I'm going. Amen? How many of you know where you're going one day? Would you say amen? Amen. We to praise the Lord. Give God thanksgiving for all that God has done. Let's pray together at this time this morning. Uh, pray for the person right beside of you that God would speak to us and work in our lives as we hear his word. And God help us to just uh, be faithful to him and ask his will to be done. So let's pray together. We'll ask our ushers to lead us as we pray at this time. Father, we thank you, Father, for this yes, day. God. We thank you for the many Hallelujah, blessings that Lord, you've given us, so Father. Father we we just thank you, Father, for the privilege to be here this morning, yes, Father. Lord, and uh, God, thank and you, uh, the ability to just be here and worship God, you this morning, Father. We just thank you, Father, for it. We pray, Father, for Lord, these uh, options that you've given this morning, Father. These places of surgery, Father, who have already faced surgery, I pray that you'll be with them, that they will face a great family, Father. I pray, Father, that more importantly, Father, that as we are here today worshiping this morning, Father, that someone here, Father, to our right, to our left, Father, that I don't know you, I pray, Father, that today be the day of salvation for us, Father. Just thank you, Father, and honor your name for who you are and what you're doing, Father, in my life. And I pray, Father, that you just be with me and thank you with this offering as we take up this morning. Use it, Father, to extend your kingdom. Father, just thank you, Father, for your grace and your love that you give us, Father. And be guiding your us again, Father, and praise your name. Amen. It is so great this morning uh, to be able to worship him. Uh, we're going to worship in song, It Is Well With My Soul. Amen. And we give God praise.
Tell you what, we're going to sing that third verse again. That'd be all right, y'all. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, not part of it, but every bit of it. Every sin you can, that the devil reminds you of, he took care of it. So when the devil reminds you, you let him know it's took care of. So let's sing that third verse again. Sing it out to him. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear.
Y'all pray for the choir as we sing. We're going to do Eye of the Storm. Open up with Eye of the Storm. solid ground is falling down from underneath my feet between the black skies and my red eyes i can barely see and when i'm feeling like i've been let down by my friends and my family i can hear the rain reminding me in the eye of the storm slowly fade away and when the tears of pain and heartache are pouring down my face I find my peace in Jesus name in the eye of the storm you remain in control in the middle of the war you guard my soul you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When they let me go and I just don't know how to run did my best, now I'm scared to death that we might lose everything. And when a sickness takes my child away and there's nothing I can do, my only hope is to trust you. I trust you, Lord. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. You remain in control in the middle of the war. You guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Amen. Good singing, choir.
and I just want to thank you. You've been good to me. You promised, Lord, if I confess all my sins, forgiveness would be mine. And faithful to your promise, you cleansed the stain that sin and left me. Just like it never happened, you held me in your arms so tenderly, assured me of your mercy, restored me completely, Lord, you've been good to me, you've been good to me, and I just want to thank you. been good to me, Lord, and I just want to praise you. You came for me when I was astray. You took me back, all my sins forgave, and I just want to thank came for me when I was astray. You took me back, all my sins forgave, and I just want to thank you. You've been good to me. Amen. Has he been good to you this morning? Well, stand together in fellowship and tell somebody how good he's been to you this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. See, it's this time just to pray for Elizabeth. She comes and stands for us this morning, too.
to see me be up here, but God thought I should be up here. And I like what he said. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. And sometimes you just have to trust God that he's going to see it. Sometimes you lose some. Right now, right now, I'm losing back. I stood on this stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be alright. Right now. It only takes a little faith to prove a mountain. Good faith, a little faith is all I have right now. God, when you choose to make mountains unmovable, give me the strength. I mean, I'd be glad this morning as well with your soul. Amen. Amen. I praise the Lord uh, this morning for the Word of God, for the opportunity God gives us to come and to uh, just worship Him and honor Him uh, this morning in the Word and lift up His wonderful name. Uh, we have a Savior who knows every single thing about us. Amen. 
Uh, he knows what we need. He knows where we are. And I'm glad this morning we can uh, lean on him and trust in him and abide in him and know that he has every single thing we will ever face in our life already in his hands. And uh, he has a plan that's bigger than us. Amen. And uh, we just want to praise him. I want to invite you this morning uh, to turn your turn in your Bible to Joshua chapter uh, number three. Joshua uh, chapter number three this morning as we look uh, at the word of God and just ask God to speak to us uh, this morning or about exactly where we are uh, in our life as a believer, where we are as uh, as a church, where we are in our uh, in our community, uh, knowing the Lord and trusting God together. I'm glad we serve a God who's in control. Amen. And uh, I bless his name uh, for all that God is doing in our hearts and lives. And we just want to give him praise this morning and give God thanksgiving. I want to invite you right now. Let's pray together. Uh, just ask God to speak to us this morning in a way like he has never spoke to us before. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. God, I'm glad this morning. God, you have a word just for us. God, you want to speak to us. God, in this place. Lord, I praise you, God, that your word is alive. And God, this morning, as we step into a brand new year, God, I know, Lord, that you have things provided for us and a path for us, or that we can never even imagine. And God, I want to thank you for allowing us the freedom, God, to be in your house. Lord, the freedom we have in a country and those who gave their life for this freedom so that we could come together, Lord, and worship and honor you. And God, just to lift up your name. And Father, we want to praise you, God, today for your word that has been preserved for us. So that today, in January of 2019, you can speak to us. God, in a way like never before, God, I just want to praise you, Jesus, that you love us so much that you want to talk to us. God, you want to guide us. Lord, as Elizabeth said, God, in those times that we don't even know what is going on, when there's good times, bad times, all those things, God, you're still God and you're still faithful. Lord, I praise you that we can lean on your word. Lord, you know exactly what you would have for us this morning. And we come, God, before you just to believe, to trust, and to know that there's absolutely nothing that you cannot do. We want to give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad this morning for his word? Amen. Amen. I praise him for his word this morning. And thank God that we can look to him and lean on him and trust in who God is and what God wants to do in our life. In Joshua chapter number three we're talking about and thinking about where joshua is with the children of israel there are almost an estimated number someone said around two million people that are here you think about joshua as he leads all of these children of israel to the place of hope he is leading them to a place number one they have never been before but number two it is a place where they have carried a promise for over 40 years and we're here think about this morning the most uh, the thing that you would want more than anything else uh, in your life to happen and it is going to happen today we're here what about that person that you have been praying for and that person you've been thinking about how that in their life, how that they need Jesus and you have been uh, working on them, you've been praying for them, you've been uh, witnessing to them, you've been just trying to lead them along to that place and today is the day that they're going to get saved. I want to ask you, how would it change our expectations? How would it change our praise? How would it change our promises? How would it change how the way how we perceive what God is about to do in our lives? We've got to go back how with the children of Israel for just a few minutes. Israel has been the recipient of God's hand upon how their lives all the way how back. And you watch them in Egypt as Egypt had crippled at their hopes. Until the day that God had delivered them by the hand of Moses and of the miracle that took place at the Red Sea. God simply destroyed the enemy in the face of faith as they believed God and they watched God take care of the enemy. Israel had been journeyed for 40 years. How long? 40 years in resistance of, the, of obedience to God in taking that next step in their life. Did they know God? Did they know God? Oh, had they, had they been fed by God? 
Had they been led by God? All these things that God had given them for 40 years, they understood that, yes, God is still faithful. I want to tell you something this morning. God is still faithful. But God has brought them to the place that they had promised. They had held, they had been delivered, but yet they had not entered into the life that God had for them. How many times in our Christian life are we just saved? We're saved, and yes, I'm not going to hell. I've got my fire insurance, and I'm saved, and yes, I'm a believer, and yes, wow, I I know it's just a great life to be saved, but that's all I ever do with knowing Jesus. That is not discipleship, by the way. That is not following Jesus, by the way. It is a life that we step out of where we are and we step into what God has provided for our life. And that is where the children of Israel are. They have been holding to all that God had said they were supposed to be and still had not entered into it. Here's a good scenario. How many people are going to go, you're planning, on going to work tomorrow. Would you lift your hand if you're planning on going to work tomorrow? Or today? Maybe somebody's got to work. Hey, can I let y'all? Okay, here's, let's give a scenario, okay? Y'all ready? Let's do tomorrow at work exactly what you are doing right now. How much work are you going to get done? None. If I go into my job in expectation that everything is going to go great, and I'm going to say, okay, that punch in. At lunchtime. Is it time to get off? Whoo, man, that was a good day at work. How much is going to be accomplished? What about our Christian life? What about church itself? What about doing what God has called us to do? It's kind of like, wow, why why are people not getting saved? Why are people not coming to church? Why don't I ask you, are we punched in and doing nothing? We expect a lot to come our way and a lot to happen when we don't put anything into what is going on. The children of Israel have walked for 40 years. Manna, they have had every single day of their life. They have been, every need has been met. They have had water, drink, God provided everything they would need. Yet, they never, many of them never got into where God called them to be. Joshua has led them to that place, and here they are, and that is where they are standing at at this very second. They have, they, they're at the place that they have heard Moses and Joshua and Caleb uh, talk about that, yes, this is what God is going to do. They are now standing, looking into the greatest opportunity of all of the world. Can I let y'all in on something else? Can I let y'all in on something else? If they do not cross, there's not going to be a Savior. You say, yeah, God's bigger than that. Yes, He is. But there's a plan, and it takes that obedience to step. We looked at that whole uh, train, and we watched as God brought it forth all the way from Adam, all the way through Abraham. Hey, I want to tell you, God's plan is in our obedience, and God leads us to obedience. He is there at the place of stepping forward. We are here. Look at somebody right quick and say, we are here. It is time in our Christian life. It is time as a believer. It is time as a church how to step into how what God has for us. All their future depends upon what they do now. I want you to look with me at one verse, and then we're going to go back and look at some others. Joshua chapter 3 and verse number 3. The Bible said, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then shall you remove from your place and do what? Go after it. 
Have you ever been determined to get something done? How many men you're determined to at least get something done? We are. When we think about being determined, there's that place that we know we just get up and go after it. Right? I know deer hunting season has just passed. For some, with spotlights, it's just starting. No, I'm just kidding. When you, you know what? They, they prepare. They're going to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning or earlier to go in the woods blindly after not taking a bath for three weeks to look and see. They're going to go after. What are they going after? They're going after a deer. They go after it. It's a sacrifice that is made. What about in our, our Christian life? How much do we take verse at number three and go after it? You say, yeah, but what's going to happen is going to happen. Hey, can I let you in on a little something? When you step out in faith, God can make stuff happen. Amen? And you look at what is going on. So this morning, for just a few minutes, I want you to see some things that are found from verse number one all the way through verse number 13 on simply stepping out. They can sit back and watch everything go by. Or they can step out. They can step out for what God is doing. We are here. It is time, first of all, in verse number one down through verse number three. He said, you have to remove. Now, in order to remove from where they are, there's some things they have to do. You have to move. You have to move. Christian life, faith, it's about forward. Faith is about something that is active in your life. Faith is not just something that has happened at one time. Faith is an action that continues in your life. After 40 years, it is time. The Bible says in verse number 1, had they been a, a stopping point at Shittim, and they set up camp, and as they are there, Joshua says it is time to move to the Jordan River, what says about eight miles. But you've got to remember, they are moving two million people eight miles. Wow. There's a lot of moving. All the babies, they're pulling baby cribs down the road. You got, they're moving eight miles to a little place in Jordan. They've heard the stories from their fathers. They've heard the stories from their mothers about being at the Jordan and backing up and not going any further. Is it going to be that again? Are we just going to get there to the brink and stop again? There's that place of removing. You know, sometimes to move, you have to remove. You've got to remove things out of our life. The Bible says in verse uh, verse number 2 uh, that there's three days that they are preparing. What are they doing those three days? He has sent spies over to see what is on the other side. They are looking at Jericho, about where they're going to cross. They're looking at the enemy that is there. They're seeing what is going to happen as they prepare. Matter of fact, they're here for three days waiting. They're here for, for three days preparing. They're here for three days sanctifying themselves, as the Bible says. They are waiting. They are, they are purposing in their heart. They are anticipating. Look what is going to happen. Can I ask you something and be real honest? We're in church. Can we be honest in church at least one time? Are you more excited about your Christian life today than you've ever been? Is it the most exciting thing about your life? Because I want to tell you, when it's not, and we have removed it from that, we're in a place of dying out. Here's what happens when we lose that fervency, that fire, that expectation, that anticipation that they have in verse number two. We begin to, we begin to only pick apart anything that is happening in our life. And all we see is, wow, we can never do that. That is negative. That is un, that, that can't happen. You know why? Because we don't see what God is doing. 
Joshua. I'm, I'm not sure how they communicated, but they do understand. They've been there long enough all of their lives. Have they understand that the timing that they are there is not the time they would choose to cross over the Jordan River. But yet they are removing, they are going. And the Bible says, I love verse number three. And we're going to kind of focus on it and then go on through the rest of it. But in verse number three, he said, look, I want you to see what is going. It is time for you to remove from where you are and you go after it. You follow after what God has for you. Now they have received what to do. He said, when you, receive, when you see how the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God. Somebody tell me what's in the Ark of the Covenant. Ten Commandments. The rod. And Moses used it. Where did he use that rod at? Red Sea, we know of. Wow. When they see the Ark of the Covenant, when they know the law of God, when they see that the power of God is coming before them, when they understand that God has given us a commandment to follow, he said, when you see it, that is the time you get up and you remove from where you are and go after it. When you see Him, follow Him. And I tell you what will happen in 2019 in our life, that'll be the greatest thing that has ever happened, is if we're removed from where we are, of uh, being stuck uh, where we are, and follow Him. He's going somewhere. And He's taking you uh, somewhere as a believer. He said, go, uh, go after it. Removing from it to go after it. It's stepping out in faith like Abraham did. Well, like Peter did uh, when he walked on the water, uh, that place of removing you got to, maybe there's some sin that needs to be removed. Guess what? We have a God that removes sin. How many of you believe He'll take away all your sin? Amen. There's things that need to be removed in our life that are keeping us from stepping out. Also, how when you look at these verses of Scripture, you understand all that He revealed in verse uh, verse number four down through verse number six. He said He said these words. He said, "Yet there shall be a space uh, between you and it about three about two thousand cubits." By measure. So he's saying uh, there is a space as God walks by, as uh, this covenant goes before you, then you are to follow uh, that space that is between, uh, is uh, several, a few thousand uh, feet that is going to happen. He said, A call uh, not near it, uh, that ye may know that the way uh, by which you must go, uh, for ye have not passed this way hitherto. He said, I want you to know you have never been this way before. Can I let y'all in on something? Sometimes it is scary walking in faith. Would y'all believe that? Sometimes there's that place of God, where is this going to lead me? And how is this going to happen? God said, I want to let y'all know something. You've never went this way before. Here's where they've been going. Every single thing that is familiar to them, that's what they've been doing, you know. Going to work, hanging out, just going through the norm. He said, you're getting ready to do something you've never done. Oh, I can understand. There's two things that are going on. There's a fear because they have been used to this. And now God is saying, but I want to give you more than you have ever had. You know, that manna you've had, yes, it is sufficient. But I want to give you a break that you can take the hole out and wear as a shower cap. I want to feed you. I want to fill you. I want to anoint you with fresh oil. Over in a land of Canaan. Oh, the Bible says and lets us know that, we, uh, that we're in that place. We must go uh, to that which is revealed. Stepping out means uh, leaning on the Word. I love chapter 1. And I wish we had time to go through all of chapter number 1. But chapter 1, uh, from verse number 6 all the way down through verse uh, number 9, I love how God prepared their heart. He said, listen, you do not have to be afraid. Can I tell you all something? You don't have to be afraid. Faith is in that place. He said, be strong and of a good courage. How about this morning? That we are, picture ourselves standing at the Jordan River. Standing on this river bank uh, that is here. 
And what we can see on the other side is somebody we've been praying for that needs Jesus. What we can see on the other side is walking in a place that we have never walked as a believer in the presence and the power of God upon us. Oh, he tells them in verse number five, he says, you get ready. How God is going to do it all. How you have lived all of your life. You have lived everything to come to this point. And we are here. By the way, at this point, the only plan is to follow the ark. God did not say, when you get there, here's what's going to happen. When God didn't, he just said, I want you, when you see the ark go by, when you see the Savior come through, I want you to just get up and I want you to follow him and go with him. Oh, and as you go with him, wow, you don't know it, but you're going to step right toward the river. You're at the brink. He's going toward the river. You're going to the river. At this point, it is harvest time. It is uh, possibly uh, in the springtime around April when all of the snows up from Mount Hermon and all those great mountaintops have, have melted and it's in that place they call harvest where the all of the water rises. It is over one mile wide. Now there's places in the Jordan River where you can almost do a good country jump. I mean, I'd be like jumping creek. Man, where you can just take off and you can say, ah, and, and get across it. Not this time. They're at a place that's a mile wide. They are looking over as this ark goes toward it and understanding that, God, you have revealed your plan, but we have no idea what's going to take place when we take that step. But I love what God did for them. In verse number five, he said, I want you to sanctify yourself. That means to purify your heart. That means let the Word take out doubt. That means let the Word do away with the fear. It means to cleanse ourselves, to prepare our heart, to purify or proclaim how, what God is doing. It is that place of consecration, of saying, God, I'm going to follow you even if it's in the river. Wow. Ever thought before in our Christian life that Man, we should never have any struggles. Have you ever thought that about your Christian life before? Man, you see people that are saved you, and, and they're struggling. Y'all know what I mean? Come on now. You see people that, I mean, they, they're believers and wow, they are, they have cancer. Like why and how should that be? These are some of the greatest people on earth. Y'all know what I mean? And you're wondering what is going on? Well, sometimes in our following and that revealing in our life. It is that place that God, wherever you are taking us, you can be glorified. And I want to follow you through it. And that is what God is teaching them. And in verse number six, he said, it's time how to take up how the ark and begin that journey. But look what happened. Oh, I love verse number seven, all the way down through verse number 13. How the Bible lets us know there's a rest in stepping out. Can I tell you something? There's turmoil in being still. There's that place uh, when you, when we do nothing in our Christian life, there's that place when it just becomes numb and we just come to church because we know we're supposed to come to church. Amen? I do believe everybody in the world should be in church. It's the greatest place on earth. Amen? But when you think about it, some of y'all believe it, some of y'all don't. Praise the Lord. I believe it's the greatest place on earth. But I want to tell you something. As a Christian, we can get real comfortable in doing nothing. Oh, the Bible says for us to be able to enter into the real peace and the rest that God has for us, it is when we step out and follow Him. And they are stepping out. Oh, it's that place of rest that God said to, to Joshua. It's the place where I'm going to lift you up. They're going to see an anointing upon you. By the way, can I tell you all something? That anointing comes with obedience. Sometimes as Christians, we just like sit back and say, Lord, I just can't wait till this happens. Lord, I just can't wait till that happens. Lord, I just can't wait for this to take place. 
five years later, we're saying, Lord, I just can't. And he said, hey, by the way, I've told you to go out and invite them to come in. God said, I'm giving you what you need. Sometimes we're, we, under, we don't understand the rest and the peace of God until we put our faith in motion and step forward and believe how God. And that is what is going on in verse number 7 all the way down through verse at number 13. There is a rest oh, in that preparation of stepping out. Here's what God told him in verse number 9 down through verse number 10. He said, you shall know that the Lord is among you. How when you step out and you believe God, you know that he is here. As soon, I love in verse number 13. I'm going to tell you about verse number 13. He said, as soon as the soles of your feet touch the brim of the water, I'm going to move the water down. Now, y'all know how we are, right? We believe everything but the Bible. Weatherman said, just going to snow. Every hardware store in the world. Well, how about snow shovel? Bring it on. Man, they'll put out any sled they got. If they don't have any sled, they'll sell a cardboard box. They put out, we, we just, we believe it, man. We see it. Woo, it says 100% chance of snow. If they say it's going to rain, we know it's going to rain. Can I, can I get an amen right there? But we think, wow, it's just going to happen. We just take it at its word. And when it comes to our spiritual life, it's it. Yeah. I just don't know if I'll ever get saved or not. I just, I, I just don't know if I can ever help them, if they can ever get to church. I don't know if I can ever, if, if God will ever do anything, with their, if they'll ever let God do anything in their life. Really? How big do we think God is? Do we think God is big enough to intervene in somebody's life? If we don't, we missed it because he intervened in ours. Amen? Oh, he said we're going to rest in the promise of what God said. And he says, I want you to know something. When you step out, I will take care of it. The Bible said, then, I shall the water be cut off and they shall stand up as a heap. That means this. He said, when you put your toe, I don't, I don't I honestly, I don't believe how that they did. That all they got was the soles of their feet in. I don't think it ever covered their toenail. He said, when you put the soles of your feet in, I'm going to go, and all that water is going to stand up. And what should have destroyed you as you went in is now protecting you. Hey, can I tell you? That's how salvation is. He's our protector when we step into Him and believe Him and trust Him. He is that one who protects us. What would have destroyed us by not receiving Him and not believing Him is that which saves us by the power of the cross and the blood of Christ. Oh, and you watch as they are stepping out. And I realize i got to hurry. i got less than four minutes to preach four more points. Can I let you know something? We'll never go any further till we step out. Then there's the place of stepping in. He said the priests have to step their feet in the water, and as they step their feet in the water, then I am going to dry it up. We have prepared. We have instructions. We have uh, the expectation of, oh, look what is about to happen in our lives. Now we've got to step into it. Here's what faith is. Y'all want to know? Faith is believing and moving toward what we believe. Faith moves us toward what we are trusting God for. If I am believing God to save somebody, I ought to be believing God enough to say something to the body I'm believing God for that place God takes the word faith coming by hearing hearing by the word of 
God. And so God gives us that opportunity to give them the word so they can believe. Here's what happens in verse uh, verse number 14. The Bible said they bear uh, the ark, and here they go. Uh, the Bible says in verse number 15 uh, that when they come to the brim of the water, that means there is a very little bit of water that is washed up on the shore. It is a flooded land. And so it has come over the banks of the Jordan. It is all the way up on the land the water is. And as soon as they put their feet in, soon as they get to that place of believing God, wow, God does a miracle. The miracle is when we believe enough to go after it from verse number 16. When I believe God enough, that I fast and I pray and I trust God for greater things. Uh, believing and knowing and getting in the brim is God, I take your word and I stand on the promise. There's the barrier that happened in verse number 16 that I just spoke about just a second ago. We are seeing it happen in verse number 16. As they stepped in, the Bible said there was a wall of water. Now you got to realize something. This is a wall that is a one mile long or one mile wide. Can you imagine the children of Israel? They've been living in the wilderness and all of a sudden God. You say, yeah, but some of them seen the Red Sea. Yes, but they have, their children never seen the Red Sea. Some of them walked across on dry land and understood, wow, what God did in that place when God split the Red Sea. Absolutely, but their children never see it. Can I let you in on something? You might experience it. But I'm telling you, you're young and we have experienced it. We might have seen God move more than we've ever seen God move in our life. But our youngest need to see it. Oh, you got to take them with you and be faithful to God. Oh, and let God do a work in their lives. They have tried it. But I want to tell you something that's even greater than that. It's about a six, about one, it's one mile across, but God dried up about a 16 mile wide place for two million people to cross. Wow. God does it like this in Ephesians 3 and verse number 20. I'm, a, I'm able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or even think, according to the power that works in you. You know what that power was? It's the Holy Spirit living in us and us believing God and taking the word and applying it to our life and stepping out in God and believing God how to do great things. Malachi said, trust, I trust me and see. He said, I'll open a window to you that the, uh, the heavens of, uh, the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you shall not even be able to receive. I know there's barriers that are in our life. Hey, God can put those barriers so that we can walk across and it's possible. Never see what God can do we step in. Wow. I want to see my friends in church. I want to see my family in church. Do y'all? I got to step into it. I've been five years old. That's just so sad. Y'all want to eat at Granny's? Yeah, come on, let's go. You go eat with, why not invite them again? They'll go shopping with you. They'll go hunting with you. They'll go fishing with you. They'll go racing with you. Amen. Hey, step in. You want them to go to heaven with us, amen? Stepping in. There's that thing of stepping over. Verse number 17, I'm through chapter 4, verse number 1. They had to step over the line. They had to walk into the path that God had opened. The Bible says this, that they stood firm. How many have ever been in a creek? You ever stepped in a creek? Would you raise your hand? How many have ever stepped in a river before? How far up did your feet go in that river? How many of you love the slick mud that's in the bottom of a river? Can I let you know, Ian, when you, when they stepped in, the Bible said they stood firm. God tried the ground I, I do want to say this. It was probably dust. That's how much God dried the ground. Stood 
burn. You know what they were standing on? They were standing on the word. God said, when you step in, I'll dry up and stand on the word to believe God. And they, stepped, and they walked over and they stepped over. Hey, by the way, can I let y'all in on something? When you stand on the word, there's some things you can step over. Amen. God will give you power over them. We'll preach on that on Wednesday night. But the Bible says in verse number one, in one of chapter four, they were saved. God took care of them all the way. Can I let you know God's going to take us safely home? Amen. And we can be safe in his presence, in his will. The safest place you and I have ever been is in the will of God. The Bible said they all passed over. And from chapter 4, verse number 1, all the way through the rest of the chapter, verse number 24, we find them stepping on. They are stepping on the land that God said in Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 3. He said, Joshua, everywhere you put the soles of your feet, I'm going to give it to you. How long have you been since we had enough faith enough to believe that God's going to give us something? That God's going to do something in us. Amen? Bible said, he said, I want you to take 12 men of the 12 tribes. I want every one of them to pick up a stone, put it on the shoulder, carry it over. I want you to set it up when you get over there. He said, for this purpose, so that every single person that sees this pile of stones is going to ask, what in the world are these stones for? He said, everywhere you put the soles of your foot, they put the sole of their foot in the water. God stood it up. They were going to put the soles of their feet in the land, and God's going to give it to them. God said, here it is. And then the Bible lets us know at the very end of chapter, verse number 19, down to verse number 24, this shall be a sign to every single person that comes by to know that God is with us. Guess what? We're here. Can I ask you something? Are we believing God enough in our lives? We want people to know that God is real because of our life. Or we can just plunge in, plunge out, and do nothing. What's going to happen after, maybe after one day, if you're, work, if you're on a machine, you're working on a, on a line, doing some furniture, Whatever your job is, if you decide today, I'm just not going to do anything, it's all just passing you by. How long are they going to let that go on? Brother Jerry, if you didn't do that, you'd have a whole lot full of folding. Everybody be looking. Hey, you know what? We're here. We are here. We're at the place. God gave the children of Israel to step out, to step in, to step over, and then to step on. Claim what God gives us in His Word. Follow Him. He says, so that they might. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your Word this morning. Thank you for how you remind us this morning. God, but most of all, thank you, Lord, for how you are challenging us this morning. God, your word gives us the opportunity to be able to believe and trust in you. God, right now, I have no idea in this building what all we need to trust you for. God, I know as a church, Lord, you are giving us so great opportunities and open doors. God, help us to step into them, step out and believe you. God, step on our land and claim it for your glory. God, you know all of us here this morning what our heart is, where we need to be, who we need to believe you for, and what we need to believe you for. And God, we come together for that right now. We give you praise. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, listen, if you're physically able this morning, let's stand together. I want to ask you this morning, what, with heads bowed and eyes closed, what are you going to believe God for this year? You say, yeah, but I believed it last year. Yeah, but did we step out into it? You say, this morning, I, just, I want to come. I want to make a commitment to God. I want to believe Him for somebody. I want to believe Him for something in my life. I want to believe with God this morning. I want to step into it. Listen, while these are coming, while we're just believing God, while we're trusting God, you say this morning, I want to believe God for something. I want to believe God for somebody this morning.
Listen, it may be a need you have. It may be a financial burden you have. Listen, it may be today somebody in your life that needs some help from God. It may be a situation that needs help from God. It may be something God has given you and said, hey, I want you to believe me. Just like the Word says, God, I want, I want you, just like Joshua. He brought them to that place and said, okay, we're going over. We're going to believe you. We're going to trust you. Listen, this morning it may be, hey, you have never trusted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Listen, I want to tell you, friend, that's why Jesus died on the cross for your sins, for my sins, the sins of the whole world. And he said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God says, I want you to know that I died on the cross for you. I was buried. And on the third day I rose. And he said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord you shall be saved. That's you and I. Friend, today you may say, I'm really not sure I'm saved. Can I let you in on something? God wants you to believe him today. Listen, you may say, I need a miracle in my life. Can I tell you something? God today wants you to believe him. God wants you to trust in what he can do in your life. You may need a miracle this morning. My God's a miracle God. <laughs> hey, let him. Just let God. Let's believe God. We are his. Let's believe him together. You say, Pastor, this morning, I've just got some things on my heart. I want to believe God for it. While these are praying, I just I just want to believe God this morning for some things that are on my heart. If you just slip your hand up. I just want to believe God today for some things in my life. Y'all bless your heart. Wow. We serve a God. He's right. If you say this morning, Pastor, my life, right now, I'm, I'm, I know I should step over, but I'm, I've got fear. I've got doubt. Maybe I've got some things in my life that I need to remove from. Just pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up? I just need God to help me. Y'all bless your hearts. Thank you. Thank you for being honest with God. Thank you. Thank you for hearing from God. You say this morning, Pastor, I'm really not sure. I know Christ is my Savior. I'm not sure I'm ready to meet God this morning. If I die today, I'll be in hell. Friend, hey, I want to tell you, Jesus loves you. Say this morning, pray for me. I'm not sure. I know the Lord. Pray for me. Just slip your hand up. Hey, guess what? We, we want to pray. We want to trust God with you and for you. Hallelujah. We serve a God this morning who is able. All stepping out. Stepping in, stepping over, stepping on. We are here. Let's believe Him together. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you this morning, God, for the opportunity to believe you and to trust you and to know, God, without a doubt, that you are greater, that you have brought us to this place for such a time as this esther said for an urgency like we have never had god because there's friends there's family there's children god there's people around us that have never god they've never experienced who you are and what you can do in our lives god i pray right now together lord that as a as believers lord we just want to pray one for another bear one another's burdens encourage lord as we pray god for every situation in this building this morning god that you would do a miracle Lord, that we'd step forward and believe you and trust you for great things. So, Father, we just ask you right now, God, that you, Lord, would just touch our friends, our neighbors, those around us, God, that they'll come to know you. Lord, uh, we just want to pray, God, right now, God, those things in our life that we need to remove, God, those things that are, are hindering our walk with you, help us to hear you, step into them, God, Lord, and to know that you're able, God, to remove those out of our, our life so that we can glorify you. Father, I pray. God, for the, where you have for us to be as a, as a church, as believers, we would trust you. God, I pray for these right now that may not know you as Savior and Lord in this building this morning. God, that even before they leave this place today, they would trust in you as Savior and Lord. God, we love you. We praise you. We honor you this morning. God, we thank you for answering prayer. We ask your will to be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to.